Hey everyone, Derek here. In this video, I want to continue on on our Automate Remote Work series and begin looking at how we can automate interactions with websites. If you missed the first one and want to check it out, the playlist is down in the description below. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. With all of that said, let's get started. In this tutorial, I want to show you some of the common Python tools to begin automating these sorts of interactions. Of course, I can't show you everything, but I want to show you enough so you can start automating these processes for your own. The most common tool when working with any website in Python is called the request library. We can import that by saying import requests. If you don't have this installed, you'll need to install it using pip. What the request library does is allow us to get and push information to web pages very easily. So let's create a variable that has the URL of a web page that we want to get information from. So for this example, I'll just use my website and assign that to this URL variable. There's some core functionality of the request library that we can use. We can use something called a get request, which will return information about a URL. We can use a post request, which will send information to a URL, and a couple more that I won't cover in this tutorial. The first of those, being a get request, is a great way to pull information. So we'll create a variable called response and use requests.get and then we'll pass in this URL. What this will do is create a response object and assign it to this response variable. That object has attributes that we can access using a period and return those back to our terminal. So if we wanted to pull information about that website, such as the status code, we could say response.status code. So we're just accessing an attribute from this object. We'll save this open up a terminal, and execute. Once that executes, we see that we get back a 200, so we know that my website is still up. There's plenty of other attributes that we can pull from this response object, and you can access them the same way. So if we wanted to print the response object, and we wanted the text, we could just say response.text. When we execute this, we should get back HTML code, which we do. So now we know a way to pull basic information from a web page. But what if you wanted to pull more specific information from this web page? Specifically, what if you wanted to pull something from this HTML code? The request library is a great way to pull information like this. However, it's not the best way to work with HTML code. Working with HTML and Python is usually done with a library called Beautiful Soup. We can say from the library, BS4 will import the class of Beautiful Soup. Beautiful Soup is an HTML parser, which makes it easy to work with HTML data. If we wanted to pull out certain things from this HTML, we could use Beautiful Soup to do that and request to get this HTML. So let's create an object using this Beautiful Soup class. And the common way to do this is to say soup, which will be our object, and we'll say Beautiful Soup. We'll pass in our response.text, and then we'll denote HTML parser. So all we're doing is creating an object, passing it the HTML, and saying to use an HTML parser to read it. Now we can work with this HTML very easily using Beautiful Soup. If we wanted to find elements on this web page, extract them, and return them, we could say something like print soup and then find all. Here we could pass in any element that we wanted to find all of them that occurred on this web page. So for example, if we wanted to pull every link on this web page and return it, we could just say A, which is the HTML equivalent of a link. If we save this and execute it, we should receive a Python list of all of those links, which we do. Just like any other Python list, we could index this however we wanted. So if we wanted the first five links, we could do something like this. Then we could save, execute, and we get back a list of five links. So now we know a quick way to pull simple information from a web page. And now we know a method to extract information from the HTML of a web page. There's plenty more that you can use Beautiful Soup for, and this is just the beginning of its functionality. But hopefully now you understand the usefulness between requests and Beautiful Soup. However, one downside of using these two libraries to automate these sorts of interactions is that it's very difficult to pull information from a site that uses JavaScript. A lot of sites load content on a client's web browser, which just means that your browser is doing most of the work whenever it visits that website. These interactions don't have a browser, so they can't load that content. But in Python, we can use a library called Selenium 
to automate a web browser so we can load that JavaScript. Let's do that now. To use Selenium, we can say from Selenium import web driver. This will be how we control a web browser using Python. To begin using Selenium, you'll need to download the appropriate driver for your machine. For me, I'm on a Mac, so I've got my downloaded Chrome driver on the same directory as my Python script. I'll have that download link in the description below. But assuming that you have that, we can begin using an automated browser by saying something like driver is equal to web driver, whatever browser we want to use. I'll be using Chrome for this example. And then we'll pass in the path of whatever driver you're using. I'm using Chrome driver since I'm using Chrome. This will just be whatever your driver is called on your desktop. Going back to the script, a quick example I have in mind is that I recently created a script that goes to the GameStop website and searches to see if a new Nintendo Switch console is in stock. Right now they're currently hard to get so I was automating a script to go to that website and check for me. To build something similar, we'll say URL to search and then we'll pass in that URL. For me, I want to go to this URL looking for a Nintendo Switch. Then all we need to say to automate this interaction is we'll use driver.get and then we'll pass in this URL to search. We'll save this and execute it. And this should open up a Chrome web browser and automate going to this website. We see that it pulls up Google Chrome and then it should go to the GameStop website automatically. After a few seconds, we see that it loads the website. This is cool, but we need specific information from this web page to be returned to us in our Python script. What I would want in this example is to pull this information from this button, which says not available. To get that information, we need to inspect the page. So we'll right click and click inspect. There's probably a faster way to do this, but how I do it is I hover over the div containers until the section that I want is highlighted. So going through these, we're searching for the section that highlights this not available button. Once we have it, we'll continuously go down until we get to the bottom div that contains just this button. Once we get all the way down, we see that we're just highlighting this button that says not available. From here, what we can do is we can right click, we can go copy, and then let's copy the X path. Once we have this, we'll go back to our text editor. I'll just paste that in right here for a moment and create it as a string. There's plenty of ways to search the HTML content of a page, but the X path is the quickest in my experience. What we can say is the content that we want is equal to the driver and then we can use a method called find element by xpath. Then we'll just pass that in to that method. So to just go through what we're doing, GameStop is using a lot of JavaScript on its front end, which means that it's very difficult to use Beautiful Soup to pull information from that website. Instead, we're using Selenium. We're automating a Chrome browser, which will load that JavaScript and make it easier to pull. We're going to that website with this line of code right here. We're finding an element by using its XPath, which is just its location within the page. Now, once we have that content that we want, let's just say print content. We'll save this, execute it, and we see that we get back something that says web element with the element described. This is an object that we can use just like how we were using objects up here. So what we can do is we can go down and say print content and access its attributes and say content.txt. Now we should return that text from that button right here. This time we see that we get back not available in our terminal. Finally, if you don't want to open up a new browser and leave it open each time, you could say browser.close. Like I said, it's tough to cover many use cases that involve the internet because they're all so different from each other. However, I hope this shows you some of the quick tools that you can use to automate interactions for yourself. And that's all I have for you this time. I hope this shows you the high level overview of how we can start automating website interactions using Python. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Until next time.